Yeah. Uh, everybody, welcome to the second day of the workshop. And uh, the first talk of the morning is by Peng Shan. And uh, the title of his talk is Coherent Categorification of Quantum Loop SO2. Please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Huan Chen. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Jordi for inviting me to give a talk here. Um, so today I'm going to talk about coherent categorification of quantum loop SL2, and this is a joint work with Michaela Varagnolo and Eric Vasco. And the paper is on the archive and the number is here. So um, let us start with G, uh, Kasmudi algebra. Say associate with a quiver um, Q, who has uh, vertices set I, and the arrow set is H. Okay, and then uh, as you know, we have a triangular decomposition of this G. And uh, so we'll consider Lustig's integral form of the quantum enveloping algebra for N. Okay, so this is an algebra over the ring Z of Q plus minus one and then so it's generated by divided power. So this is Lustig integral form. Okay. And so people have studied categorification of this object with the first one given by Lustig. So, uh, so I will recall his construction, his construction since I'll use it later. So categorification of EQN and the one uh, constructed by Lustig is given as follows. So what you do, you consider uh, the space of representations of your quiver um, Q. So um, yeah, so maybe that means just as we know that this, this algebra has a grading, it's graded by the uh, positive part of the root lattice. So we have a position like this, which this stands for the beta weight space. And I identify this Ni with uh, the positive part of the root lattice by sending an element beta equals to sum of beta I times I to a uh, sum of beta i times the simple root f i. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so each beta would correspond to a dimension vector for the representation of this, this quiver q. And so it, let's note x beta is the space of uh, representation of q of dimension vector beta over C, okay? And there's a natural action of the group G beta on it, where G beta is just the product of GL of this beta I. And then we can consider the quotient stack, which I denote by curly X beta. It's the quotient stack of straight X beta by G beta, okay? And so um, what Lustig did was to consider um, a certain sedi additive category of semi-simple complexes of constructible sheaves on this, on this stack. And uh, for that, he, you, you need the, the definition of the convolution product on, um, on the derived category of constructible sheaves on this stack. Okay, so maybe let me just first write down the convolution uh, diagram. So you have a, the diagram, the following diagram for beta and gamma two dimension vectors. You can, so on the left, you have the, the product of these two sets. And then in the middle, you have a term which I will denote X beta tilde. So this is par uh, parametrizing the isomorphism classes of the flags of representation V embedded into V prime, such that uh, the dimension vector of V is beta and dimension vector of V prime is, uh, is beta plus gamma, okay? 
And then you have a you have a map to uh, x theta plus gamma, where this is just projecting to the term v prime, and the left arrow is uh, projecting to v and v prime quotient by v. Okay. And then uh, so let me write denote this map by q and p. So q is a smooth map and p is proper, and so you can uh, so this yields. Uh, a convolution product, uh, which I will denote it by induction. So this goes from the uh, derived category of contractible sheaves on x theta uh, times dBc of x gamma and arrives into dBc of x theta plus gamma. And you just pull back by Q and, and push forward by Q. So this makes um, so this makes the direct sum of this dBc of x theta a monoidal category. And then uh, you consider some well, Lucy consider some distinguished objects in this category, which is basically the product of uh, the constant sheaves supported on the on the representation. Um, of dimension vector corresponding to the simple roots. Okay, so in other words, um, like more formally, if you write uh, the set I beta is the set of the sequences of elements in I, so I will write a new one, new n in I n, such that their sum is, they sum up to, to beta. Then for each of this, I mean, and then you can, for each of nu like this, you have this object L nu is just doing product of the constant sheaves on each of the x nu i. So this is induction of C of nu one product of C of nu two and C of nu n. Okay, so this, I'll refer to this as Lucix context. And then uh, the additive category we're interested in, which I write it at Cx beta. So this is the, um, so this is the additive category inside dBc of x beta, which is generated by all the uh, direct factors of this L nu for all the new belongs to I beta. So I take uh, their direct sums or their summons and all the, all the uh, shifts where all the degree shifts. So this is the, the homological shift on the, on the derived category. Okay. And so you can prove by decomposition theorem like this is a, this is, this category is, sta is stable undertaking induction. So this is a, this is a monoidal uh, additive subcategory. Okay. And then the theorem proved by Lustig was that this category, um, if you take the sum over all the beta of Cx theta, so it's Grodeni group is isomorphic to UQ of N uh, such that, so the Q will correspond to this shift. And then the, um, the induction, we, the product we just discussed corresponds to the multiplication. And then uh, what is remarkable is that the classes of the intersection complexes, uh, well, their image are actually canonical bases for UQ of N. Okay. So this is uh, something which is quite uh, classical in the in the field, and which is also of some fundamental importance. And then um, a second categorification 
was given by Kovan of Lauda in, in Urukie around 2008. So this is using so-called quiver hyper algebras. So, uh, And so um, I think I will not say what they are. What I was saying is that it's like before. Um, so for each of this beta, you have an you have an algebra which is so called quiver Heike algebra. So this is a z graded algebra, and it is given in terms of generators and relations. So uh, defined in terms of generator and relation. So it's very uh, explicit. And then, um, it, so this algebra has, has been uh, studied a lot since it has been introduced. And, and we know that the category of projective modules, graded projective modules over this, this algebra also categorifies UQ of N, okay. And actually, uh, we know more than that, that this, we know that this quiver algebra, so this categorification is related to Lucix one. And this was this theorem due to Rukia and Vernula West rule, which says that uh, actually this algebra R beta is isomorphic to the extension algebra inside this DBC of X beta of Lustig sheaf. Like you take all the Lustig sheaf, Lustig complex in I beta and take their extension algebra. Um, okay. So, um, so therefore it follows from theorem that uh, there is an equivalence of additive categories between the this category C of X beta, which we defined here, and the category of graded projective modules over the quiver hack algebra. So our graded projective modules. So as, as additive category, but actually, <clears throat> Um, so if you take the direct sum of them, then as we discussed before, here you have a, on the left-hand side, you have this in, uh, induction given by convolution. And on the right-hand side, you have, you have actually an algebraic induction functor given by a natural embedding from these two sub algebras inside our beta plus that. Okay. So this algebraic induction function, I'll use it later. I'll just put a circle for this uh, as a notation for this induction function. And then this is, uh, this is the equivalence of a uh, graded monoidal category. And then we know that the, the IC complex is going to uh, in decomposable self-dual projective module. Okay. So um, in this term, you can say that quiver Heike algebra gives you a, a purely algebraic categorification of UQ of N, which is equivalent to the geometric one we knew before. Okay. And the advantage of having such an algebraic categorification is that, for example, it allows you to, um, well, it's, since it's purely algebraic, it's quite easy to manu manipulate and it allows you to, to understand more, uh, more uh, to categorify much more structures related to quantum groups. For example, there, there people have studied categorifications of the integral representations for UQ of G, categorification of UQ G and, and many other things. So in particular for, is there any question? 
Okay. And and in particular, actually, um, so okay, maybe let me say it this way. Using uh, what we have said before and this equivalence, you you know that our beta graded projective module categorify the Grodeny group is isomorphic to UQN with a structure corresponding to each other. And actually, if you consider the Grodeny group of just our beta graded fi the finite dimensional modules over our beta, this is a billion category. You take its Grodeny group, this will categorify uh, the so-called um, quantum coordinate ring for the for the unipotent group of n. So this is quantum coordinate ring. So this will be used uh, later in my talk. Okay. So this was kind of the review of uh, of the categorification story. And what we're interested in today is we would like to discuss um, so some sort of coherent analog of this picture. So um, I, let me say, so the next thing I want to discuss is coherent categorification of quantum loop algebra. So this was motivated by people studying uh, cohomological Hall algebra or K-theoretical Hall algebra. The kind of object you consider is, so you, you start as before, uh, you have this X beta, which is representation of Q with dimension vector beta. You have action of G beta on it. And then uh, we had this stack, curly X beta. But now you want to consider uh, coherent sheaves on the cotangent of this stack. But to formulate that, uh, you need to formulate this cotangent. What you need to do is you you consider um, the action, the induced action of G beta on the cotangent of this vector space X beta, and then uh, this action is Hamiltonian, so you get a moment map from. P star X beta to uh, the Lie algebra of G beta D. And then I'll just use killing form to identify this with G beta. So this is the, the moment map. And then, uh, so here you have an action of, so here you have an ac action of course, of G beta as before, and the map is G beta equivariant. And you also have an action of a C star, which acts, which acts on, um, as the dilation of uh, weight one. Dilation of weight one. Okay. So this C star action, this, this product, I would denote it by G beta C beta. And then, uh, so uh, the cotangent stack will be the DG stack, which is the defined as the, di the direct fiber product of uh, T star, like the de derived fiber at zero. So you take direct fiber product of zero with T star X beta over G beta and, uh, and you quotient by this action of G beta C. Um, yeah, I think that I'll put a C here to index that I, I the, the C. Okay. And then um, the idea is to consider the category of uh, coherent shapes on this on this stack. But since now everything is DG, well, we take everything in the DG sense. So take um, the derived category of DG modules of, so we take the derived category of sheaves 
of uh, DG modules with, uh, with coherent cohomology. <laughs> so many co uh, coherent cohomology. Uh, which is uh, like which coherent support on this fiber mu minus one of zero over G beta. Okay. okay. And then on this category, as before, using the same kind, well, it's not the same kind of diagram, but, but on this category, you can also define a convolution product, the similar. Um, well, you can define a convolution product on this category. So, uh, so this is again graded monoidal uh, with the monoidal structure given by some convolution product. Okay. And then we have the following thing, the following theorem. So this is written down uh, in a recent paper by Ranulo and Matsuro, where they prove that if you, uh, if Let's assume Q is of finite type. Okay. And then um, the Grodin group of this category. Equal of P star X beta C equipped with this product is isomorphic to the algebra uh, the M, the quantum unlocking algebra of the the loop algebra of N, so this N T T plus minus one. Okay. So this is compatible with the usual model that when you take coherent sheaf uh, on the cotangent, you affinize your algebra. Okay. And then. Uh, so from this perspective, you can ask a natural question is that whether this category admits a, a presentation in terms of generator relations. As uh, before, what we discussed is constructible sheaves on, on X beta and Lucy defines some remarkable uh, semi-simple additive category where you can, you can describe purely in terms of this quiver hyperalgebra. And you can ask the same question for, for this category here. And it turns out, well, this is uh, quite complicated. And for the moment, we don't have a good answer to this question. And I don't think people, uh, yeah, I don't think there's a good answer. Like, I don't think we know how to approach this for the moment. But there is another, um, there is an, well, you can ask a better question which is if you consider the Lie algebra, the question. So uh, if you consider the Lie algebra, the affine Lie algebra, so this Q is a finite type. So you have GQ, which is a semi-simple Lie algebra. You, you consider it's affine Lie algebra. Then it is a central extension of the loop algebra. plus some center. Well, plus the relation, let's just ignore that. And this is a, this is a Kasmudi algebra. What's well, Kasmudi? And so, um, so, in this, so this, in this situation, we had a categorification of, of part of this thing using quiver hyperalgebras of this affine type. And you can ask, whether that is related to how that is related to this category of coherent sheaves. Okay, so the question is uh, uh, how to relate like quiver hyperalgebra of GQ hat to uh, this category DG4 of P star X beta C. And so the goal of this talk is to uh, provide some answer for SL2, 
for GQ equals to SL2 case. Mm -hmm. So uh, for that purpose, let's first look at in the SL2 case, what is this category on the coherent side? Okay, for uh, this case, in this case, um, Q is just a point, okay, the quiver for SL2. And then, uh, so what you need to choose is just, uh, the dimension vector is just an integer, so I would denote it by R, okay? And then if we repeat this uh, procedure we did over here, then uh, this X beta, so this X R, there's no arrows. So this is just a point zero with an action of the group GLR uh, cross C star. Okay. And then, um, and then so, well, there's not, nothing much to say about this. So this uh, cotangent of X R C is just the quotient stack of the uh, direct product of zero with itself inside the Lie algebra of GLR. Okay, the moment that goes from zero to GLR and then just pick uh, piece for this area. And then you quotient out the action of GLR C. And, and now if you compute this, uh, this is the, the category we're interested in, this DG co of P star of this thing. So this is the um, same as the derived category of modules over the exterior algebra, taking the causal resolution, uh, semi-direct product with this group. GLRC. Okay. And then you using you use causal duality. This is the same as uh, the derived category of uh, you can change this exterior algebra to the symmetric algebra, and then this is the same as uh, equivalent coherent sheaves on GLR. So this is, so in the case of SL2, this is a very nice category. And now the question is how, so you want to relate this category to this category of coherent shapes to this quiver high algebra uh, picture. Okay. But before relating those two, we need to look at um, what's going on with the, with the underlying group uh, Grodenti group. So let's take a look, look at of the root system for S for a fine SO2. Okay. So um, so for a fine SO2, you have uh, these. So for SO2, we had these roots. I will note the you know the roots for SO2 by alpha zero and minus alpha zero, which is not a standard convention, but let me just do it. And then uh, you had all the uh, real roots, which are like alpha zero plus delta, alpha zero plus two delta, and etc. cetera. And, and the minus ones. And then you have these imaginary roots, uh, delta, two delta, et cetera. Okay. And now uh, recall that what we have said is that the Grodendi group of this coherent category corresponds to UQ of the loop part of, of N. Okay. So the roots appearing here are um, like, this is the Dringfeld positive half for the fine transmit algebra. Okay. So if you look at the, this, the, de the decomposition into uh, root spaces for this algebra, what in the case of SL2, what will occur are the roots of the form alpha zero plus Z delta. Okay. So, um, so this part, this corresponds to this half here. So this 
So this half is the Dreamfeld uh, positive half. So uh, positive half. And as we said, this is categorified by uh, DB, in this case, by DB co of GLR. And then um, what quiver Heike algebra does is quiver Heike algebra uh, categorify the usual Kazmudi positive half. So the Kazmudi positive half in this case corresponds to all these well, positive roots in the as positive sums of simple roots. So this is so this is uh, Kazmudi positive half. So this is categorized by quiver Heike algebra associated to an, a fine SL2 quiver like this. Okay. And so uh, if you want to relate these two category, then what makes sense is to ask, uh, are they, well, you can look at the subcategory, restrict both category to the, to the part of the intersection. So you can, you can, uh, so inside each of the categorification, you have a you have a categorification of this this yellow part, which sits inside both both algebras, and you can ask whether um, you can find subcategories on both sides which are equivalent uh, and categorifying this part. Okay, and so if we look at the roots uh, for this part, maybe I change one more color. So the, the positive roots in this part, so I write it at delta plus. So uh, maybe, yeah, I just write it delta. So this is the set uh, of, I will write this root as beta n, which is of the form alpha zero plus n delta for positive n. Okay. Okay, and then uh, if you look at the enveloping algebra of the n uh, corresponding to these roots, this is the same as, uh, well, th this is UQ of, well, okay, maybe, maybe let me just say, uh, if you take the sum of the root spaces correspond to this part, this is just n bracket. And we're going to we're considering categorification of UQ of, of this. Okay. So, are there any questions? Okay, if not, uh, so I would say what we're going to the category we're going to consider. So, I have already said uh, on the coherent category what appears is this category. And now I want to tell you uh, what happens on the quiver hyper algebra side. So, uh, so we'll, we'll consider uh, this quiver for SO2, but we will choose the orientation, which is uh, like the arrow goes to in, into one direction. So this is the so-called chronic quiver. And then since I want to consider uh, the sub-algebra generated by certain types of root vectors, which are not um, simple roots, I need to uh, fix a convex order on, so on the plot, so fix a convex order on the set of all positive uh, Kasmudi, so Kasmudi positive roots. And such that alpha zero is smaller than alpha zero plus delta, et cetera. And then you have imaginary root in the middle and then smaller than. So I choose, a, I choose an order like this. And then given this order, you can, so, so you can, and then Lucic define this uh, root vectors and dual root vectors in the, in the uh, enveloping algebra of UQ of N. And then it can prove that uh, the dual root vectors are actually belongs to the canonical basis. So for each of the N, each integer N, you have a unique simple graded R beta module. 
which I denote by L of theta n, such that uh, its class in the group in the Grodeni group goes to this dual root vector e theta n. Okay. And then uh, now you you want since the um, the algebra we want to categorify is the subalgebra of U Q uh, and hat for the cosmology part generated by this uh, the root vectors for these roots. So you just take uh, C to be yeah maybe I I use a red. So you so this is an important category. You take the uh, monoidal subcategory in, so yeah, C is the monoidal category inside all the category of graded modules, finite dimensional modules over R beta generated by this L of theta N and all its graded shifts. So this, uh, this, 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 is for, this is the notation for the graded shifts. And this is for all positive n and uh, any integer k. And this is generated uh, in, sense of, in the sense of monoidal uh, subcategory. And you take a full zero category like this. And then by construction, you know that the Grodeni group of this thing is the quantum enveloping algebra of this n of t. This is the n for SL2 and bracket t. Okay. So this is the subcategory you pick on the quiver Heike side. And now uh, the main theorem is the following. So what we prove is that there exists a, so there exists an equivalence of graded monoidal category um, well maybe I don't say monoidal for me I would make a comment later of graded uh, abelian categories between two things which will be a little bit different from the category I just discussed above, but that will explain later the relationship. So the first one is a sort of a variation of this category C, which I denote by C sharp. Um, and on the other hand side, so what I should relate to is, is something related to coherent sheaves on, on the Lie algebra GLR, but actually what appears in this abelian category is the category of perverse coherent sheaf on the nilpotent cone inside uh, GLR. You take equivalent uh, perverse coherent sheaves, and then here you take the sum over all the Rs. And then uh, I will also need to take a positive, well, some conditions on the coherent sheaves, like corresponding to the to the positive corresponding. Because if you if you take without this positive part, you will get this growing group will get all the t plus minus one. To get only positive loops, I need to put some uh, degree conditions on the on the on the coherent sheaves. Okay, so uh, so I have already said so this is you know, potent form. This stands for perverse coherent sheaves. And this C sharp is, uh, so this is a subcategory inside C uh, with the same symbols. So uh, with same, same symbols. So basically the C sharp is not too far from C. So you're just killing some central uh, characters. Well, some, somehow like on C, uh, this, th there's a cen central part which acts locally neopotently, and on C sharp we require it acts by zero, so it's a difference like that. Okay. Okay. So this is a 
this is an equivalence of category which kind of uh, realized the goal we discussed before because uh, the left hand side is a category coming from quiver Heike algebra of SL2 hat and then the right hand side is a category coming from coherent machines. And then, uh, so this equivalence satisfy has some uh, nice properties. So first of all, it's um, so such that it first of all, it induces identity on the Grodini group, which is this AQ of NT. Okay. So on both sides, you have some natural way to identify these, the Grodini group with AQ of NT, and then this functor is actually identity on the Grodini group. And the second thing is it's uh, compatible with a proper stratified structure. Like on both, Categories you have a uh, you have some proper stratified structures and then uh, basically we show that this category sends proper standard modules to proper standard modules. Okay. And then uh, finally, what we can prove for the moment is this category is weak monodal. So like it's compatible with the monodal structure on. Uh, certain classes of simple objects, but we hope to prove it's monoidal um, actually. Yeah, so it's, it's a work in progress to prove like this is actually a equivalence of monoidal categories. Okay. So this is, uh, well, this is the main result. And then um, there is a deformed version of this which doesn't have these decorations with this sharp and uh, and and code and code. So we conjecture. We have the following conjecture that there should there uh, should exist an equ uh, equivalence of graded triangulated category. Graded triangulated category between uh, just derived category of this category C and uh, the derived category of uh, equivalent coherent sheaves on uh, well, DD GLRC on the, on the whole Lie algebra. And I should take the sum over all the odds. And again, I take uh, those uh, coherent shapes with the corresponding to the polynomial representation for GLR. So this is uh, this is a conjecture, and uh, I think for the time remains, I will not discuss the proof, but I will mention some relationship to monoidal categorification of cluster algebras. So uh, relation to categorification of cluster algebras. Or well, quantum cluster algebras actually. So, um, so for any symmetric has Moody algebra. Well, actually, all the cases I discussed are symmetric. Algebra G. Uh, there's a famous theorem by Guys, Leclerc, and Schroer. Which says uh, if you consider, if you pick W an element in the well group, and you consider AQ of N W, which is the quantum coordinate range for, um, for the unipotent group associated with, so this is quantum coordinate range 
for so NW, which is the product of alpha, <clears throat> belongs to the positive part root intersection with W of the negative root of N alpha. And uh, so they showed that this, this algebra has the structure of a quantum cl cluster algebra. Okay. So this is some additional structure on the algebra where you, you, uh, you well, which says you can produce this algebra starting from some initial seed and then doing this mutation procedure. And, and in particular, you have certain like clusters of variables inside this algebra. So there's some additional structure on this algebra. And also, um, they also, so there's also a quantum cluster structure on the quantum unipotent cell for the, um, an open part of, of this. So this is, uh, so both of them have are, have some, the structure of some quantum cluster algebras. And then, uh, and then it turns out, so some work by Kong Kashiwara, there are a series of work by Kong Kashiwara, Kim O and Park, showing that this quantum cluster structure can be categorified using quiver hacker algebras. So you know that, for example, this is subalgebra inside, uh, inside AQ of N. And AQ of N was categorized by graded modules over the quiver hacker algebras. And then you can define a subcategory inside that module category, uh, which categorify this part. And moreover, uh, yeah, maybe I let me be a little bit precise, more precise than that. So you fix, uh, so what they say, you fix a reduced expression for W, and then this gives you a sort of a convex order on on this set on delta plus intersection with delta W of delta minus. And then, uh, and then this, so let me denote this set by delta of W. And then uh, for the same reason as before, this tells you that for all the roots alpha here, you have a simple uh, module L alpha, which, uh, which corresponds to the dual root vector E alpha stuff. And then you define this category C of W, just uh, the subcategory generated, monoidal uh, Sarah subcategory generated by this L alpha. So this is the same as what we did before for SL2. So this is generated as monoidal transfer. And then uh, what they prove is that this uh, provides Um, a monoidal categorification of the quantum cluster algebra AQ of NW. So the fact that it's called any group is just this is, is not, it follows from construction. But uh, when we say it's a monoidal categorification of cluster algebra, it contains an important fact, uh, which is, so, so this terminology means that all the, uh, class, all the uh, cluster monomials are um, correspond to classes of simple modules, which, which, is, which is actually a, a difficult. Are classes of simple modules. Okay. 
Okay, and then there's a similar version for for this uh, AQ of an upper W, which is a localization of, of this category, of this IDB. So let me not go into detail for that part. Um, right. And then uh, two years ago, in 2018, there is also a, a coherent categorification of this quantum cluster algebra in the case of SL2 affine. So uh, due to Cautis and Williams, and so uh, they were in the setting where G is SL2 affine. So this was Kang Kashwara and co-authors, they are, they work, so this works for any Kasmudi algebra, but now for the coherent setting, we go to SL2 affine and we consider W is this S0, it's of the form S0 times S1 s1 and raise it to the power of some capital n okay and so n is some positive number and in this situation uh if you do the computation then this delta plus w we defined over here is the same as uh alpha zero plus k delta for k positive and smaller equal to two and minus one. Okay. So you realize this was a subset of the delta plus I was considering before. Okay, so if you take n go to infinity, then you get uh, the same set I was discussing before the theorem. So uh, in this setting, the coherent categorification of this uh, quantum cluster algebra is realized as follows. So we take the affine Grassmannian. So let's take K to be the field of uh, Laurent power series, and then O to be the integers inside K. And then, you know, we have this affine Grassmannian for the group GL capital N. So this parameterize, um, this parameterize O lattices in KN. And then it has an action by the group GLNO and semi direct product with the loop rotation on O. And then uh, inside it, you can consider those lattices which uh, sits, which is contained in the standard lattice of co dimension R. And then, uh, so since all the orbit for the GL and O action on the affine Grassmannian has even dimensional, so uh, it, it makes sense to consider perverse coherent sheaves, um, which are GL and O plus C star equivalent on this Grassmannian of N and on this uh, Grassmannian of N L. And, uh, and and so this this is again perverse coherent sheaves. And 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 you can uh, using convolution you can equip this category with a monoidal structure given by convolution. And then. Uh, what uh, Cautis and Williams proved is that, uh, so theorem by Cautis and Williams is that uh, this category here gives a monoidal categorification of a Q of N W. And actually, uh, if you localize this and you you, you recover the pro, uh, perverse coherent sheaf on the whole Afan Grassmannian, which realize so there's some similar version for uh, let me write it down GLNO. Let me 
Ich glaube, das AQ auf meinem Rücken. So, uh, so we find a situation where you, so you, you have a category fixing of the subalgebra inside uh, this positive AQ of N, which admits a categorification on one hand side by quiver high algebras and on the other hand side by perverse coherent schemes. And, and again, you would ask, are they equivalent? And so, um, so our theorem actually provides uh, a functor between these two categorifications. So let me explain. Uh, for that, you, you, you'll need uh, a theorem by Hinkelberg and Fujita. Which tells you that, um, uh, so there is a flat morphism from this and R, uh, this stack here. I think this map is actually instead of that Lucy, uh, sending to the neopotent cone of GLR, okay. R cross C star. Just these are the lattices inside O plus N of dimension R. So if you take the quotient, the Z will be a new potent operator for this in this GLR, which gives this map. Um, and, and the pullback, so a pullback by this map uh, gives a graded monoidal T exact functor from the category, the derived category of coherent schemes on the neopotent cone to this um, derived category of coherent schemes on the FN Grassmannian. Okay. So here the T, T exact is re with respect to the perverse current structure on both sides. Okay. And so therefore, uh, so our theorem provides you a functor from this category, uh, this category CW sharp to this category, uh, to the perverse coherent sheath here. And if you combine with their functor, you get, uh, so our main theorem Give you, gives you a, a functor from this C sharp of W to uh, perverse coherent sheaves on this uh, upon grass manual. Okay, I think I should take the sum over all the odds. And this this functor is is graded monoidal and faithful. So we hope that uh, so yeah, for the moment we can't really prove its uh, equivalence, but the conjecture is that uh, after localization. This would uh, give an equivalence of uh, this monoidal categorification of cluster algebras. Okay. okay, I think my time is up and now we will stop here. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's thank Pong for the wonderful talk. Uh, is there any question from the audience? Uh, I think if you are in the attendee group, you should raise your hand and or type a message in the chat so I'm aware. Otherwise, you can just unmute yourself.
So can, uh, can you check everything is for characteristic zero coefficients? Uh, uh, and do, do you have any, do, do you expect things to remain true for characteristic, for positive characteristic coefficients? Uh, now there are parts that have been uh, uh, like Finkelberg, is, is a part like Finkelberg Fujita, I mean, are these parts uh, also okay in characteristic P, do you know? Uh, Finkelberg Fujita. I don't, I think it's reasonable to hope that the, the main theorem still holds for positive characteristic, though I'm not a hundred percent sure about it. But, um, but in the proof, we use some mixed categories that which I think it's still, uh, it should still work in, in positive characteristic. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi, Pang. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I might have I might have missed it, but um, so you have these nilpotent no operators, and when you kill them, they get C sharp. Somehow, it's supported on the nilpotent no cone. Um, but when you don't, you wanted it to be on all of GLR, or is it like set theoretically supported on the nilpotent no cone? I don't understand how the nilpotent. No, no, no. So yeah, okay. So the relationship is is this. So um, right. Let me go back to the correct place. Right, so, so if we look at this conjecture, what we're hoping for is this derived category of this category C uh, should be equivalent to this category. And the center, uh, the, so the center of this category is like GLR equivalent invariant functions on GLR. And then, so you can show that this side, this C is a module over some algebra who has also that center. And actually uh, what you do is that if you specialize that central, that center to, to, the, to the trivial central character, then here um, you get the direct coherent shifts on your potent cone. And here you need to consider modules of the quotient of that algebra. And that's precisely the definition of this C sharp. I didn't talk about in the talk. So basically the fact here we're restricting to the neopotent cone corresponding taking this, this sharp here. Got it, okay. Uh, is there any other question? Uh, okay, uh, if not, let's thank Paul again.